let's talk about my school takes, shall we? Since we're on the topic, because everybody's still mad about them. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, you know, uh, so for those who don't know, a couple of weeks ago, there was a bunch of memes going around on Twitter about school and it started because of this anarchist account who is a, like an eco anarchist, I think, um, named Anarchismus. I like their account. I don't agree with everything they say, but I think they have some interesting stuff to talk about. They mostly tweet little theory and, and art and stuff. They're like one of the, they're like really into, uh, so, uh, solar punk. Cool shit. You know, interesting stuff. And they had a take about school being bad. And I agreed. I think school is pretty bad. Guys, I think school is pretty bad. I don't think learning is bad for the record. But there's something, and I made this mistake, by the way, just so I can do a little bit of, we do a little bit of self-critiquing. In truth, I fell into, uh, in the heat of the moment, I fell in to the conflation, even in that conversation, between school and learning. And I didn't mean to. It was chaotic. But nonetheless, a mistake is a mistake. The reality is that school is actually quite bad at encouraging learning. It's good at forcing people to have to learn very specific things on threat of their life being ruined in one way or another, in threat with threats of permanent records and detentions and suspensions and all kinds of, uh, and, and calling the cops and all kinds of things like that. Um, but I have, but people were like, well, shouldn't we just reform schooling? I don't think so, actually. There's this weird phenomenon that has happened um, or that happens a lot among liberal circles, okay? And um, it's this idea that basically liberals believe that if something is in the world right now, it is essentially the baseline. It must continue to exist. All institutions, hence why they're called an institution, all things that are these sort of self-perpetuating government entities or perhaps public-private entities or whatever, must continue in the world because their absence would be bad. And it's never fully explained why their absence would be bad, you know? But I, yeah, status quo warrior. Exactly. It's a status quo warrior, okay? Status quo warriors are all over the place, and they're especially common now that Biden's in power, who is the ultimate status quo warrior. Now, I don't know if you know this, but uh, it has been a facet of nearly every form of art from film to literature to uh, music to deeply criticize school. You ever heard of Pink Floyd? You ever heard of like basically every counterculture uh, uh, band from, I don't know, like the 60s until now talking about how schooling is a giant indoctrination factory literally based off of assembly lines to cram as many children in to gainful employment, to being good for society. And, they, and of course, who is it who decides what's good for society but the state? And interestingly... They make you into a good employee or they make you into a, a public servant via the military if you can't make it through school or they make you a prisoner. That's usually what their goal is. One of those three outcomes is what the goal of school is. The goal of school is to make you learn all of the things that the state thinks you have to know in order to keep their version of the economy going. And this is a historical structure. You can't just look at school now or school five years ago. These things are literally, they were built into the design of modern, of, of schooling as we understand it now. That these institutions were built to empower the United States, often in the case of schooling, against communism against communism, whatever that boogeyman is. And it's very weird to me that there's so much defense on on these by these online people of, of an institution that we know does a shit-ass job. And everybody talks about, well, yeah, but what, do you think kids just shouldn't learn anything? 
No, there's ways. Children learn shit all the time. There are all kinds of ways for children to learn stuff. They learn stuff on the internet. They learn stuff through experience. They learn stuff from their friends. They learn stuff from their parents, from their communities. Well, increasingly, people don't learn anything from their communities because they don't have them. People increasingly don't learn stuff from their schools because their schools are underfunded as shit. And the few things that they were able to get from school in the past, they're not able to get now. Schools have never done a good job serving neurodivergent people or people with learning disabilities or people with physical disabilities. Basically, anybody who's not 100% fitting into the hegemonic standard of our culture gets fucked by schools. And it's very weird, isn't it? Very, very weird. And, um, yeah, there's all kinds of ways. I'm neurodivergent and school structure saved me. That's good for you. You should be able to choose that type of, skull of, of structure if you want. You should be able to choose that if you want. But why should everyone else who isn't you have to be mandatorily forced through one specific type of learning that just so happens to do exactly what the U.S. government wants it to do. And keep in mind that the U.S. government is not some good entity. Guys, the U.S. government is a entity which, in which capitalism is baked into it, into the systems of this government. Oh, he's a snitch? Uh, it doesn't surprise me. You know, everybody likes to poke fun at like tankies, you know, for being like, oh my God, if only we could be like Vietnam and be taught the glory of Ho Chi Minh thought. Guess what? We do that. American education is disgusting. American standardized history education is shit. We don't learn about anything bad about our state. We grow up being taught that the United States is the perfect place that's never done anything wrong. And there are cracks. There are some teachers who go against that. There are some teaching organizations that push against that, but they are pushing against the will of the state. CRT being banned all over the United States. Discussions of slavery, discussions of evolution, all these kinds of things that challenge the hegemonic structure of the, of the state of the U.S. And the problem is that just because schooling exists doesn't mean it's doing anything that it says it's supposed to. I think that a lot of people don't actually get very much from school. They get a lot from learning from their friends. They figure some stuff out on their own. Their teachers teach them some things. They get some basic school, school skills. They get a lot of trauma. They get a lot of pain. Some of them get shunted off into uh, constant punishment and agony. And then sometimes they drop out and sometimes they become, sometimes they're criminalized and they end up in prison. A lot of people end up developing all kinds of problems from the bullying they get at school because teachers don't give a shit and there's no real structure. They just kind of let kids go at it. So I had a take about it, which was basically, guys, compulsory schooling isn't the greatest thing in the universe. It really, really, it really, really fucking isn't. It isn't the greatest thing in the universe. Uh, it's not this, uh, this, this perfect structure that we all need to make sure is enshrined forever. And advocating against it does not mean advocating against learning. And there's a funny argument that came up that I seriously seriously want to talk about okay and this is one that's personal to me okay we're, we're gonna go we'll go into open questions about my take on schooling that we can explore at a chill rate okay but first i want to talk about one of the things i heard okay a lot in this conversation which is what about religious enclaves okay what about religious enclaves and i have i have an answer to that because i grew up in a religious enclave you all remember that Y'all remember I did an entire stream talking about the extreme religious enclave? And guess what? I was one of the lucky ones who, because of a weird chain of events, was able to sort of slowly tiptoe my way out of that, partially 
because of school. But I went to a different school than most people go to. I was allowed to go to a private school, a private school that had a lot of different uh, approaches to learning than traditional schools. A school that didn't fixate um, only on SAT scores. A school that had tutors on hand. They provided tutors. A school that didn't have any special needs kids because it was a private school and they didn't have to do that, which is pretty shitty. But you can see how that might make it a little easier for them to not have to have the issues that we talk about when they don't even have to do it by law. Because they're, because they're a private school, they can just say we don't take any special needs students. You see what I'm talking about? So there was this conversation. What about religious enclaves? Don't we want to get, you know, don't aren't we worried about kids who are isolated and who could be being abused by, you know, extreme religions or, or whatever? Well, yeah, of course that's concerning. But school was it, why is that? Why would we ever think that's school? Why would we ever put the job of dealing with extremist communities and child abuse on the hands of school? What? That doesn't even make sense to me. What, that school's supposed to be, ideally, about learning. Why the fuck is that the defense that everybody had to come up with? And the funny thing is that it doesn't even have anything to do with mandatory schooling. Mandatory schooling doesn't solve this issue. It criminalizes it. And then they run further into their enclaves. They hide even further. Mandatory schooling does not help. Let me tell you. And the funny thing is, here's how it gets really weird. In the United States, religious schools qualify under the current mandatory schooling. So the state functionally signs off on schools like the one I went to. A school which was an unaccredited Christian high school with a Christian curriculum that sucked. We didn't learn any science. We learned creation science. We didn't learn traditional uh, traditional literature. We learned Christian literature. It doesn't do it. It doesn't work. So that's really just a different question that people are talking about, which is how do you deal with a religious enclave, which there are all kinds of answers to that. But I find it weird that people's idea is that the state should basically be given the um, power to just go in and force your kids to go into their institution of indoctrination from another one. And don't make it, let's not make any mistakes. That's what schools are. Schools are designed to make you a part, uh, to make you a part of American society, which means you get your standardized tests. You get your, uh, you learn your skills so that you can be a good worker bee. That's what schools are designed for. And if you don't believe me, you don't have to take my word for it. Go look at the history of education. Go read about what the stated, explicit, and systemic goals of public schooling were. It was designed to create a productive workforce, not to make people learn, not to make people happy, good people. It was designed to support directly the capitalist economy as it currently exists. Or in this case with schooling, as it existed as public schooling came about in the, in the turn of the century. And you'll notice, interestingly, that public schooling was originally only available to certain people. So it functionally acted as a way to reinforce class. And you want to know what happened? Literacy was taught by independent organizations. Churches, synagogues were one of them. Synagogues taught literacy to people, taught reading not as a public school, but simply because it was good to teach people to read. That's, again, one of those examples where Jesus Christ were getting flanked on the left by religions. What the fuck? What the fuck? Reading is important. Learning is important. Mathematics is super important. Not necessarily to everybody. But to, I mean, some level of mathematics is probably pretty important for everybody. But when you start mandating school and not just mandating school, not just, not just mandating, not mandating learning, 
not mandating even uh, 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 it's not even just that there's a test that you have to show up and take, which would be horrible that you have to take in order to make sure that you've been doing it. Although some places in America basically function like that. It's not even that it's school. It's the institution that has been made mandatory, not education, not learning, not teaching school, school where everybody does the, you know, pledge of allegiance and listens to the, to the, to the, uh, the, the, the national anthem and you get your anti-drug shit and you get your, uh, drug war indoctrination and you get your, uh, America's wars are all good indoctrination. You get your, here's how you participate and become a workable member of society. And if you don't, we're going to put it, if you don't do exactly what we say, if you get in trouble for something completely bullshit, if you have a teacher that hates you, they have the power to ruin your life forever because they can put shit that goes on your permanent record and you can't escape that shit. And then you're going to end up poor and then you're going to end up in prison. That's how school runs in America. And that's pretty fucked. And I don't know. To me, that doesn't seem like something you can just reform. When the foundations of schooling is not about learning, but instead about making productive members of society. That is the same logic that Christian schools operate under. Notice that Christian schools aren't about teaching you, uh, Christian schools aren't about teaching you all the things that, that you're going to need to live your life. They're not about teaching you all the job skills you need. Christian schools are about teaching you the Bible. They're about teaching you how to be a good Christian. Likewise, American public education is largely about teaching you to be a good American citizen, which interestingly looks in their mind like a white guy. A white guy who works for a corporation. Schools let fucking recruiters come in. They let fucking military recruiters come in. Isn't that wild? So it's funny to me that there was such a huge reaction to this uh, critique of schooling and this critique of the idea that schooling perhaps shouldn't be compulsory and instead we should try to build like systems in our society that are actually conducive to learning, that are actually conducive to the growth of, of, of thriving, liberated people, people who can think for themselves and live happily, that that should be the goal. But that's not what the goal of schools are. And this is why I'm very critical of schools. Most people didn't hear good alternatives. There's a problem with that. Okay. Are you ready? There's a problem with the question of pe with the, the, there's a problem in the framing of that question, which we can address right now. I'm going to address it right now. What are the alternatives? Here we go. Guys. Look, I hear you. Slavery is really bad, but what's the alternative? How how are we going to get all of the cotton we need to keep our exports going? That's pretty fucked, isn't it? You wouldn't accept that as an argument, would you? But that's the same argument that people make here. Well, what's the alternative? What, if we're not traumatizing these children on a daily basis by the millions, literally killing them because we don't have plague, uh, we don't have good protection for them from the plague, we're killing them and their teachers. Let's just ignore this. We have to keep doing, what's the alternative? Bro, let people fucking learn. Fund libraries. Fund independent teachers that people can go to. Fund anything. You can, these are statist solutions. And I'm not even getting started on the anarchist solutions. People react strong. No, no, no. That's not why most people reacted strongly. People don't react strongly because there's no alternative. People react strongly because they're afraid of the things that they take for granted, perhaps being problematic. It's the same reason why a lot of people react really poorly to hearing anything negative about meat production. It's the same thing. It's something you're familiar with and it makes you uncomfortable to hear it be critiqued. And it makes you especially comfortable to hear it uh, uncomfortable to hear it critiqued in a very severe way. That's what a lot of people were reacting to. And there are all kinds of alternatives. And you know what's funny? If anybody was even interested in that, there are so many alternatives. Do you know that there's like, there's, let's see, there's Montessori schools. There's fucking uh, Suds, Sudbury schools. There's tutorship programs. There's hands-on learning. There is so goddamn many other things that you could look at. Other models. Guys, did you know? 
wait a minute, did you know there are highly literate countries that don't have public schooling systems in the way that we understand them? That there is community teaching, that there is uh, community figures who are known to be teachers and who can teach people who come to them and they don't have to go terrify people who don't feel like they're that, like they're able to. 85D2D Derek says, I actually have a counter argument that's a bit different from Hans's, but gets it, I hope so, but gets at the heart of the issue. I agree that our school system is fucked, but as a hypothetical, what would you do about parents who think that girls should not learn how to read or write and their young daughters agree with them because they don't know any better? That isn't solved by mandatory schooling. That isn't solved by mandatory schooling. It isn't. You, first of all, the state never fucking finds out about that shit. Because it's impossible it, without having like cops in people's homes and all this invasive crap that, that negatively affects all kinds of people. It's very hard to deal with that. That happens right now under our system that we have. Okay? That's a huge, oh God, it's so frustrating. I mean, I get it. I understand where you're coming from, but that already happens. People don't understand how these things happen. I know because I live that life. If the government, if you believe, if you have a religious belief, God is going to outweigh the government and they will retreat further into religious enclaves. You want to know how you reach religious enclaves? It sucks, but you have to do it with humility. You have to be willing to bite your tongue and to go into those places and give people the stuff that they need. You have to find ways to reach those people in those communities that don't involve threatening them with the state. It sucks. It sucks. It hurts. It's not nice. It's terrible that we have these things. It's terrible that these enclaves can choke people out, but mandatory schooling doesn't do it. In the same way that the FBI fucking raiding Waco didn't do it. We know what happened there. We covered that shit on here. They retreat further. As it turns out, people believe in God more than they believe in the state most of the time. If they're believers in God. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's tough. It's a tough question. Nobody ever said these answers, these things were going to be easy, but schooling doesn't do that. I'm telling you right now, it doesn't do it. They really don't. It may, yeah, it does. Exactly. Threatening cults makes the cults clamp down on children. Ice Bean says, one of the people who responded to your school take Gappy V is literally named for the gap year he was forced to take after one of his teachers wrote him a negative letter of recommendation for his colleges, all because the teacher's kid didn't like him. Yeah, that sucks. And that's a one-off, but that's an example. The problem that you have is that schools are hyper-hierarchical. It's not just that. You don't. It's not just one teacher. The whole system is designed to do that. It weeds out the bad kids and pushes them into jobs like uh, being in the military like being a cop, it pushes them into these positions. And um, <clears throat> there's a lot to be talked about. See, because I think that the solution to this is, 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 in, uh, is in quite literally we ourselves building alternatives, which is to say things like Here's an example. This is a, this is an example that I'm going to use to ex, uh, to um, expand out. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give you an example of something that I think is incredible that I think more of would be better. Ready? Here goes. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Wikipedia. Okay. Wikipedia has made it possible for people to learn about just about anything like that, and if they can get access to Wikipedia at a local library. They can go and learn on their own time about what they're interested in. And guess what? Wikipedia has people who who create guides to certain information. There's all kinds of stuff. And I'm not saying that it, it needs to be private industry or anything, but community run, communally run things. We need to look at this and go, God damn, the people in our town need to learn to read. What if I start offering to teach people how to read? You want to know what's crazy? Guys, you want to know what's really wild? I grew up in a state where the where the illiteracy rate is really, really high. Really high. And it has mandatory schooling, by the way. And a lot of public schools and a lot of funding for public schools. But the illiteracy rate is really fucking high nonetheless. And you want to know what happens is that there's a bunch of 
random charities that end up doing that work because they set up things and they go, hey, if you want to come learn, come to us. They make themselves, they make people aware of them. They put flyers up. They go around and tell people that they exist. They go to door to door and they give people information on where to find them. Come, we'll learn, we'll teach you how to read without any tests or anything. You can just come to learn how to read. I think a re the reason a lot of people had trouble being charitable with your take is that it involves a lot of societal change. Well, yeah. Yeah, that is, that is why they had a problem with it. Because what people think is they don't want to think that, that we need to change things. They don't want to think that they've got to do stuff. They want to push it off onto some abstraction. They want to say, well, can't the just government come fix it? They don't do that. That's not what governments do. Governments consolidate power. They manage. They wage wars. They make laws and enforce them. That's what states do. States aren't there to help you out. That's a side effect of anything. And, and, and it's, it's <sighs> the thing is, it's just that people, people don't know, they don't know a thing. They've never talked to anybody who struggled with school. They've never talked to anybody. They've never looked at the fact that our country is, has the highest prison population in the fucking planet. One of the highest, I don't think it's the highest. I think we're like the second or third highest or something along those lines. Somewhere in there. We're in the top five somewhere. I don't have the exact stats on my hand. We have the highest prison population, one of the highest prison populations in the world. I won't say the highest, okay? There, no lefty misinfo, okay? And a lot of that is because our school system pumps people directly into prison. And if you think about it, it kind of starts to make a lot of sense, doesn't it? We have free prison labor in a lot of places. The state can literally use prisoners to do things that they want to do. They can make them work on infrastructure projects. They can make them go fight fires. That's what happened. All over California. You want to know who it was who died in the wildfires, fighting the wildfires so that the state didn't burn down? Prisoners. Largely drug crimes. That's insane. People don't want to confront the fact that we have societal problems, that we have to change the way that we look at things, that that a, a society of constant threats, constant uh, surveillance, constant cracking down, constant attempts at managing every person, controlling for every possible thing that could go against the interests of the state in any way, shape, or form is not a good way of doing things. We do have the highest. Okay, I oh, we're the higher by a long shot. There you have it. We have the highest prison population. Ridiculous. Yep, that's true. Gay Fesh brings up the same prisoners who fight wildfires aren't even then allowed to join fire departments when they get out. Yep. We have, a, we have a nefarious state of affairs. You can't reform this to be better. Reforms could make things, could alleviate certain things. They could alleviate certain bad things. But the institution is bad. The institution is bad. It's doing bad things. It's having bad outcomes. So when people say they want an alternative, um, like, again, like I say, with the slavery thing, not that the institution of, of, te of schooling is the same as the institution of slavery, Although there are some interesting crossovers, the goal isn't to replace it. It isn't to just have an alternative. It's to change the way we do it. We do not need schools. We do not need to force children to go into a place that makes them miserable so that they can learn how to be a worker bee. We need, in my opinion, a world that is devoted to making humans be the fullest that they can be. And I think we'll be happier and better off if we do that. And when I say that, I mean we equip people to do what they want. We equip people to build. We equip people to be creative. We don't equip them to be, uh, f force them to be worker bees. The U.S. has the highest prison population at 23 million prisoners, 25% of the world's total prison population. Disgusting. That is the country that you live in. You live in Mordor. You understand that, right? If you live in America. Until these boomers holding on to change, uh, holding on to power, nothing will change, die, nothing will change. What police reform we got after the George Floyd protest? Nothing really. That's not true. I disagree with you on that. And we'll talk about that more in the future. But I think that if we refuse to, even, even if, let me ask you this. Even if we accept that we can't re uh, revolutionize schooling, that we can't completely rethink uh, learning 
in the world. Um, uh, even if that we can't make it fix it right now, do you not think that it is valuable to, with clear eyes, aggressively critique these structures? Do you not think that that is important? I think it's fucking important. I agree with you, Riverboat Jack. I think it goes beyond the boomers. As we can see by the fact that there's a bunch of fucking Zoomers canceling me about this. They're not running for political office because they know that there's no point. Have you seen the state of the U.S. government? Guys, have you seen the state of the U.S. government? Fuck! They're, they're, the one functional thing that we have, the post office, is getting undercut intentionally it's being pushed over into private industry the american government is nothing but a shell that rubber stamps what corporations do at the point at this point in time and i've said this many times that we are the ones who have to solve the problems we don't get to cop out and push it off onto a politician we don't get to push it off and put it onto a state that is an illusion, an illusion which is fading rapidly. And the faster you realize that the government ain't coming to help you. They didn't come during COVID. We're on wet year two of COVID. How many are dead here? They're not coming for you. You're going to look like me. You're going to be dead, You're gonna bitch. Die. You're going to die. You don't do anything, you're going to motherfucking die. And what's rule number one? What's rule number one, everybody? Does everyone remember what rule number one is? Don't fucking die. Don't fucking die. Do not motherfucking die. And there's a lot of ways not to die, as it turns out. You got friends who have needs, help them fulfill those needs. You got communities they have needs, help them fulfill those needs. You have needs, find a community that can help you fulfill those needs. We need to connect. We need to fucking reconnect. Actually. Not just in the ephemera of social media, where everything that we say and do is commodified as a product. We need to connect for real. We need to build, make friends. And that doesn't mean that you can't use social media. It just means you gotta go fucking beyond it. Okay? You have to go beyond it. Because these platforms really are designed to addict you. And there's this, oh, I watched this incredible, oh my God. I watched this incredible lecture. Um, Let me bring it up. It's really good. I, I watched this incredible, incredible lecture. Um, Real quick, hold on. Let me get it up here real quick. I put it on my fucking politics videos here. Let me show it to you. Where'd it go here? By a old school programmer by the name of Jaron Lanier. Okay? This guy. I'm going to post this in chat. If any of you want to learn about how social media works, let me just get this real quick for you. Here you go. We're not going to watch it now because it's really long. But if, you, if you're the lecture enjoying type, I'm telling you, this is a banger. This guy talks about the history of computing and how we got here, okay? Go right ahead. Go ahead, put that on your watch later list. I'm telling you right now, puppy fawn. <laughs> You're so cute. Thank you. Yeah. Wait, where are his legs? Oh, it, it's blocked by somebody's, uh, it's blocked by somebody's head. He's amazing, okay? And this video talks about all this shit. It talks about how, uh, there are how literally the algorithms on social media are emotional manipulation algorithms. That is literally what they are. They are there to get you to do certain things, which is the thing. And I've talked about this with the imps code of Twitter. I've talked about this in all of my things about Twitter. It's to get you to help them share more ads. So we have to become aware of these things. If we don't become aware of these things, then we will simply fall into them and be used and ground up and left miserable and confused. But what I'm saying is uh, not all forms of change look like a protest. Not all forms of change look like a, 
uh, look like a, uh, like an uprising. Well, that's certainly some of them. Protests and uprising are ways of change. Sometimes they look like sitting down and teaching the people you care about something new. Sometimes it looks like taking the time to make sure the people around you are okay. Sometimes it's about getting to know your environment and what things could make life harder for you and yours. Sometimes it's about recognizing things before they happen. Things like, oh shit, why is the state of my neighborhood falling into disrepair? Are we being gentrified? Are we being squeezed out? Should I talk to my neighbors? Should we work together? Should I find a new community to go get in that's safer? Sometimes it looks like growing food. Sometimes it looks like sharing food. And that's why people don't like the idea of societal change. Because it's uncomfortable. Because it means you got to do something. And doing stuff is scary. Especially in a world where uh, we put all our money into police forces that crack down on shit randomly. But guess what, guys? We got to be fucking brave. We got to be fucking brave. Because if you're not brave... Well, you're going to die. You're going to end up like me. All right, everybody. That's it. That's the take. Now you know. Now you know why I have problems with this. Because I have problems not with the idea of making sure that kids get taught. That's good. Making sure kids learn. But that's not what these schools do. That's not what mandatory schooling. That's not what schooling does. Schooling doesn't teach kids. It bangs them on the head until they become a worker. Pup? Nah. Fawn? 69. 69? Er, Shit. Wait, wait, wait. That's the problem. And that's the problem I have with schooling. And we could have had an interesting conversation around that if it wasn't for a bunch of intellectually lazy losers.